Please stand by. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September 14th, 2020 Zoning Hearing Master Hearing. My name is Susan Finch, and I'll be presiding as the hearing officer over tonight's cases. Let me start by introducing Mr. Brian Grady. To my left, he's with the Development Services Department, and he'll go over the changes we have to tonight's agenda. Mr. Grady. Good evening. Uh, again, for the record, Brian Grady, Hillsborough County Development Services Department. Uh, we have two changes to tonight's uh, published agenda. The first change is on page five of the agenda, item D4, rezoning application 20-0808. Uh, the change is that this application, uh, subsequent to the, the public hearing tonight, will be heard at the subsequent uh, BOCC land use meeting on October 13th, 2020. Uh, when Mr. Clark with the county attorney's office goes through the oral argument procedures and filing to be able to speak at the up at the land use meeting that uh, corresponds with the cases on this agenda, uh, we'll go into some more details regarding some uh, relevant dates regarding uh, oral argument deadlines and the re report filing deadline uh, at that time on the agenda. The other change on the agenda is on page five of the agenda item D1, rezoning application PD 20-0103. Uh, the Athens Water for Construction and Development Incorporated. The applicant is requesting continuance to the October 19, 2020 Zoning Hearing Master Hearing. <clears throat> I believe the applicant is, is online virtual to explain the reasons for the request of continuance. Okay, available. Madam Hearing Master, can you hear me? Can you try again? Madam Hearing Master, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. All right. Uh, this is Michael Horner, 14502 North Dale Mabry Highway, Tampa 33618, representing Waterford Construction and Development. <laughs> we are seeking a continuance of this case tonight to October 19th, uh, Ms. Finch, primarily for three reasons. One, we have a pending administrative variance uh, before Mike Williams that has not been executed yet, so we can't proceed without that. Secondly, we have a... Uh, and requiring a significant reduction of our project that we have to evaluate. And thirdly, uh, I understand we just recently were made aware of uh, opposition from a couple of residents on Moran Road. We reached out to them and advised we'd be seeking the continuance. So based on that, uh, we will re-notice for the October 19th hearing. I would ask you uh, assistance in allowing us to continue this case. So much, Mr. Horner. Is there anyone here in the room that would like to speak to the continuance of rezoning PD 20-0103? Not to the merits of the case, but rather the continuance. Anyone in the room? All right. Anyone online that wants to speak to that case? All right. Then, Mr. Horner, we will grant your continuance uh, of RZPD 20-0103 which will be heard at the October 19th, 2020 Zoning Hearing Master Hearing. All right, thank you so much. Changes to the published uh, uh, agenda. I'll now go through the uh, withdrawals and continuances on page four of the agenda. 
Uh, first item is item A1, rezoning standard 20-0144. This application out of order to be heard and has been continued to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. Item A2, rezoning PD 20-0154. This application has been continued by the applicant to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. Item A3, rezoning PD 20-0286. This application is out of order to be heard and has been continued to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. Item A4, uh, rezoning standard 20-0312. Uh, this application is out of order to be heard and has been continued to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. Item A5, rezoning PD 20-0389. This application has been continued by the applicant to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. Item A6, Rezoning PD 20-0392. This application has been continued by the applicant to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. Item A7, rezoning PD 20-0394. This application is out of order to be heard and has been continued to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. And item A8, rezoning PD 20-0475. This application has been continued by the applicant to the October 19, 2020 zoning hearing master hearing. That concludes all withdrawals and continuances. All right, thank you so much. Let me go over our procedures. Uh, and process for tonight's hearing. Tonight's agenda consists of items that require a hearing before a zoning hearing master prior to the final decision by the Board of County Commissioners. I'll conduct the hearing tonight as the zoning hearing master and will make a recommendation on each application 15 business days following tonight's hearing. That recommendation will then be sent to the Board of County Commissioners for their final decision. Our hearing tonight is informal. I'll ask questions related to direct testimony presented tonight I'll call, question, I'll call and question witnesses as I deem appropriate and will decide all questions of procedure. Irrelevant, immaterial, or unduly repetitious evidence will be excluded. Any part of evidence must may be received in written form and all testimony must be under oath. Hearsay evidence may be used for the purpose of supplementing or explaining other evidence, but shall not be sufficient in and of itself to support a finding by me unless it would be admissible over objections in a civil action. Our order of presentation tonight is as follows. Mr. Grady of the Development Services Department will provide a brief introduction of each agenda item. We'll then go to the applicant. The applicant and their team has 15 minutes total to make their presentation. We'll then go back to the Development Services staff planner that was assigned the case. They will have five minutes to discuss the county staff report and findings. And the same is true when we go next to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission will also have five minutes to go over the application's consistency with the comprehensive plan. Next will be proponents, anyone that would like to speak in favor, total time, 15 minutes. Then opponents, anyone who would like to oppose an application, 15 minutes. We'll go back to county staff who will have five minutes to address any items or issues that have come up tonight's hearing. And then finally, we go back to the applicant who has five minutes for rebuttal. 15 minute time for opponents and proponents. That is total. So if there are, if uh, five people raise their hand, then we will divide that 15 minutes into three minutes each. Uh, the clerk will track that time and that's how we um, make it fair. If you want to have a designated speaker to speak for you and use the entire time, you can do that. That is up to you. When you come up to the podium to speak or if you're uh, making your presentation virtually, if you could always start by giving me your name and address for the record. And then when you're done, if you're here in the room, if you could see please, uh, Elise to my right, she's with the clerk's office. She has a sign-in sheet and you'll need to sign in with your name and address and also the application number that we have for you. Let me now ask the county attorney to uh, advise you of the legal requirements for oral argument that allow you to speak at the Board of County Commissioners meeting. Thank you, good evening. Uh, my name is Cameron Clark, I'm an Assistant County Attorney. Tonight's public hearing is the first step of a two-step rezoning process. This hearing is a time for rezoning applicants and interested parties to present testimony and evidence. Any evidence presented tonight will become the complete factual record of each application and no additional evidence can be introduced after the closing of each application. The second step of the rezoning process is a public meeting before the Board of County Commissioners, where the Board will take a decision on each application heard tonight. Tonight's applications are scheduled to be heard by the Board at its November 10th, 2020 land use meeting. When considering applications, the Board will only review the record created at tonight's hearing 
and the recommendation made by the hearing master for each application. The hearing master will file a recommendation for each application heard tonight on October 5th. Any party of record wishing to address the board at its public meeting must execute and submit a request for oral argument form explaining why oral argument is necessary. Requests for oral argument must be responsive to the hearing master's recommendation. Therefore, such requests cannot be filed until after the hearing master has submitted their recommendation to the county on October 5th. Following this date, any party wishing to address the board at its public meeting will have 10 days to submit a request for oral argument to the clerk to the Board of County Commissioners. Therefore, for tonight's applications, if you wish to address the board at its November 10th land use meeting, you must file your request for oral argument between October 5th and the close of business on October 15th. While the board is not required to hear oral argument at the public meeting, the board can elect to hear oral argument from a party of record. A party of record is an individual who fits into at least one of the following four categories. First, someone who is present tonight and presents testimony or documentary evidence. Second, an individual who is certified by the U.S. Postal Service as having ma been mailed notice of tonight's hearing. Third, someone who submitted documentary evidence to the master file at least two business days prior to tonight's hearing. Or fourth, someone who submitted documentary evidence by proxy at tonight's hearing. Should the board elect hear oral argument, parties of record will be eligible to address the board if their requests for oral argument are responsive to the hearing master recommendation and if they clearly set forth why oral argument is necessary to address at least one of the four outstanding issues that are laid out in section 10.03.04E of the Land Development Code. If the board elects to hear oral argument, the content of that argument shall be limited to the content of the testimony and other evidence that is submitted verbally or in writing to the hearing master tonight. It is the role of the county attorney's office to ensure that only individuals who have met these requirements are allowed to speak before the board and to ensure that no new evidence or testimony is introduced or allowed at the board's public meeting. For these reasons, please make sure that all information you wish the board to consider at its public meeting is entered in tonight's record. And just a, a quick point of clarification, uh, the oral argument deadlines are going to be different, um, and I believe Mr. Grady will clarify this when we get to the application for application uh, that shows up as D4 on your agenda tonight, uh, Major Mod 20-0808 and uh, the deadlines for those will be different, and Mr. Grady will read those into the record when we get to that application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned, all testimony must be under oath. So if you plan to speak tonight, if you could please stand, raise your right hand, both in person and virtually, if you could do that, and I'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Please be seated. Mr. Brady, if you could please call the first case. The first item is agenda item C1, rezoning standard 20-0343. The, the applicant's uh, Slayton Lewis M. Trustee. The request is rezoned from RSC2 and agricultural rural to uh, commercial intensive with restrictions. Uh, Tanya Chappelle will provide staff recommendation to presentation by the applicant. All right. Good evening. Good evening, Hearing Master. Todd Pressman, 200 Second Avenue South, number 451 in St. Petersburg. I do have a PowerPoint here for you. This is RZ20-0343, located um, off of 301, or just a little bit off of 301 at Stacy Road and Knights Griffin in the northwest part of the county. A little bit closer view for you. Issue is seven plus or minus acres, currently zoned AR, proposed to be CIR. There is a companion future land use amendment that goes along with this. Um, the restriction is to restrict only for open storage of RVs, boats, and trailers. So it's a very specific application, very specific use. The use is extremely quiet, rarely used, extremely well buffered and separated. Uh, there's virtually no infrastructure, virtually no water, no septic, no sewer, extremely low trips. Staff report indicates 36 average trips a day, which would be um, two peak in the AM and four peak in the PM. Uh, there's no wetland impacts in the area that the project is proposed. This is a survey of the property. And what we have done is we have cut out the 
uh, future land use and zoning application area, which is uh, roughly 381 feet by 831 feet. So we did that to be obviously very secluded uh, and extremely well buffered from any user. Um, I have it as 449 feet, more or less, to the closest residential to the south, which is approximately one and one half football fields in distance. We felt that was a very good distance. Uh, the neighbor to the north is here tonight. He's in support. Um, the gentleman I've also come to understand owns a property to the east, which I don't have marked, uh, where it says the venue by the lake. And Mr. Strickland owns a property to the east. I've sent an email, or there's an email on file for him uh, for this application. And I'd like to read into the record his email, which indicates his name is Ricky Strickland, Strickland Properties. I'm writing. So the board has my opinion on this case. I'm one of the owners of the land that borders the entire, entire west side across the street from the Slatton parcel. My grandfather's owned it for 30 years until his passing. Previously, it was an orange grove that died out because citrus greening is now cleared. Uh, our family has lived for five generations in the area, so I'm very familiar with the area, and I think the proposal that the Slattons are asking for will be a great fit for that location. It's very low impact. The area have a tall hedge around the entire, an entire fence that goes around the whole area. RV storage is a low impact as far as the noise. They drop off and pick up and they're gone. It would be a good fit for subdivision uh, with multi versus multifamilies uh, and less cars on the road. I have no problem with the request that's before the board as he's indicated. So we can show you that there's uh, very much encompassing support surrounding the project site by the property owners. Knights Griffin Road is classified as an arterial roadway. Uh, what's really interesting here, Hearing Master, is that the site is already extremely well buffered. You can see from the aerial in the shadows that there is um, hedging all the way around the property and fencing. And to see what that looks like, this is on 14 Highway. You can see it's a substantial buffer, and that does go all the way around the property. There's a fence included as well, as you can see. This is the uh, uh, buffering or greenery on Knight's Griffin. You can see the notice sign there. This is another shot on Knight's Griffin. And this is in some of the residential, this is in, in the southern residential subdivision, as you can see through an area, as you can see, is very dense uh, and again, fenced. Just another view. Now, I think it's interesting to note that under current agriculture zoning categories, the site could provide very intensive uses by right. Uh, heavy machinery. Um, Mr. Sladden has done a lot of strawberry growing, which requires a lot of water and pumps going in the evenings and through nights. Uh, those are very loud and can be very intensive. Um, these type of vehicles, of course, for agriculture uses are permitted by right. Uh, husbandry of animals as well can be included and, and, and handled. Um, there, are, there is some somewhat nearby intensive zoning in the area. Uh, I'm noting you can see the site up uh, on my screen is the upper uh, right. At the lower is LI and OC20. There's some other uh, commercial zonings in the um, in the somewhat vicinity. That's the aerial of southeastern, you can see southeastern freight lines and other manufacturing industrial uses as well. So again, the use is extremely quiet as compared to even a residential. As you know, there's very little buffering, almost none between residential homes. So a desire to have residential and residential home doesn't always result in a great neighbor. Um, this has no parties, no noxious, uh, odors, no loud activity, no pool parties. Um, again, it's rarely used. It's extremely well buffered and separated, extreme low trips, and there are no wetland impacts as to where we're at. So in summary, the use is guaranteed as a restricted RV boat and trailer storage versus um, other elements that could, uh, uses that could be allowed. Storage use is a great neighbor. We built in tremendous buffering and separation. We have good support from the close by neighbors on the Northwest and the East, and it's located on Ontario Highway. I'll be happy to answer any other questions you have, and there's a couple of folks here to speak. Okay, um, my first question is, can you tell me the status of the comprehensive plan amendment? Um, the uh, planning commission did not support it. Uh, the staff found it inconsistent, and it is lined up to be a companion when this appears to the Board of County Commissioners. I see. Um, all right, uh, I think that was my only question. You said you have people that you'd like to have speak? Uh, yeah, there's the two gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. You've got about eight minutes left. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah. Good James evening. Slyden, 11201 Nice Griffin Road. 
for this asset. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. First of all, thank all of y'all for being here. We appreciate a lot of tough times going on. I'd also hate to inconvenience my neighbors with this because it's so something sorry, that you would rather not do. Oh, hang on one second. I'm Can sorry. you please come and sign in? Thank you. Sorry. Go get on the roster, Coach. So I, I'm horribly, you know, I don't like to mess with people's family time after we're all going through it. We're going through and working hard. So thank you very much. I'm in the mid '60s. My parents bought this property. We had uh, primarily orange groves on it to help pay for it. The orange groves are gone. You know, they're not coming back. My neighbor to the other side of me on the Strickland Coastes Grove just spent about 350 grand trying to grow one for five years. When our orange grove was pushed up, it was sad. Also, where these people lived, I'm sure it was sad for them. So my mom went in and put in a big infrastructure because she didn't want to move looking at a dead orange grove forever. Um, the place cost about ten dollars to $12,000 a month to run. Just having it out there, and we have to find something to go on it. We looked and looked and looked at what we could do. Can't make the money with the cows. Ag is gone, unless you're a big farmer. Um, some of the other things I'd like to cover is there's a there are 21 businesses on the end of Florence Road, 4,000 feet from a feet through our grove, where there's heavy industrial use going on. I don't want that either. So I've looked for the sleepiest thing that I can find to put there because I don't want to live in the middle of an industrial park either. Um, and I have found that the RV use is only three times a year. The National Association for RVs limited in and out their, their trips are 1500 mile trips they use them three times a year we live next to an rv storage place that's full of capacity the hoas have people running for places to try and find a place to put their boats and rvs um and i would love to talk to my neighbors about it but mr pressman sent an email to him and one of the neighbors said that they didn't need to talk to me at all about it in an email I'd like to meet them over there. I would like it to be what they want it to be as well. And I also think that our, um, the planning lady that came out and looked at it, obviously did not see the, the what we could put there, the discount, the dollar store, one corner off or a strip mall or something like that. And I would love for my neighbors to know that I don't want anything like that either. So, um, but we can't farm it. If we farm it, there's chemicals, spray issues right next to their neighborhood and things they wouldn't want. Todd, is there anything else you want me to say? Oh, yeah. And, and Ricky Strickland's in Georgia right now. He couldn't make it. He has family issues up there. He had somebody pass. Yeah. You've spoken with him. Oh, I've spoken with him. He's in full support of, of the project. And uh, one of my other neighbors is here to speak about the project. But I'd love to meet the neighbors. If they want us to do something different, work on some things, do some things together. We lived, we've lived out there since the 60s. Um, the other thing, let me show you guys everything. Uh, on Harney Road, right on Tom Folsom Road, not far from us, they've got a sign where an RV storage is coming right in there in between two neighborhoods just down from the high school. So that would be, you know, just on the other side of the road, a less traveled road that we're on. We've also got the feed store, the tire store, and other things coming up out that way. Amazon's building the largest Amazon in the world out by us. And Brandon used to be a farm too. And where their houses were, that was an orange grove I played in when I was a kid. You know, so I would love to have orange grove. They just won't grow here anymore. No Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. If you could please yeah. sign in with the clerk's office. Thank you. Mr. Pressman, does that complete your presentation? Oh, okay. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Am I allowed to lower my mask? Or yes, not? we asked. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You can't take your mask down. No, okay. I apologize. You misunderstood. All right. Uh, my we name wish, is. Uh, we wish Don we could. Huh? We, we wish we could. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, my name is Don Balaban. Um, I live at 9410 Allen Brook Street, uh, Temple Terrace. It's uh, 33637. I, um, I'm the gentleman that owns probably most of Fenona Sassa right now. Uh, I'm the last crop farmer out there. I own large strawberry farms. I own 114 acres across from him, which three, acre of his, three acres of it is currently zoned commercial. You could throw a rock and hit it from his property. He's less than a tenth of a mile from 301. I also own the Lemon Orchard venue, which is three driveways uh, down from him. 
four actually counting his mom. So I've uh, known him forever. I support the zoning. Knights Griffin Road is a major thoroughfare. It's an evacuation route, okay? It's a heavily traveled road when I-4 shut down. It's, it's one of the busiest roads there. And 301, like I said, is less than a tenth of a mile away, straight shot from them. And that is one of the top five uh, heaviest travel roads in Hillsborough County. So we, ha we have major roads out there. There is a uh, block of industrial commercial, which I had brought to their attention on Florence Avenue, which is, he said, 4,000 feet away. I'm, I didn't measure it. I can tell you, but it's not far away. I was shocked when the... Uh, uh, planning, uh, whoever for Hillsborough County prepared the original report on this before we started the meetings, you, it was so biased. They, they said there was no commercial in the area. You know, I'm born and raised here, and I, I retired sheriff's office. I worked 35 years as a supervisor and a patrol debtor. That was the most biased report, and I called her and confronted her on it and said, you can't do things like this. If it's going to go to the public and go to the planning commission, they don't go out and check this. They rely off of what you report. You work for the government, and the people need to know. I said you left that industrial park area off. You left off down the street at Antioch, the tire store, the feed store, the church. What's happening on 301, and everything that's happening in Thernona Sass is exploding. We got an Amazon coming in. And there's going to be the largest Amazon in uh, all of southern United States, nine stories at the corner of 301 and Harney. The area is really going to explode. We have water and sewer. The county's moving the urban service area into the rest of the non -Assassa. They're putting a large fire station in. The current one's on septic. So it's going to change. The place is going to explode. And we've, we've got to manage it right. The county's got to manage it. When you bring urban and service in, you've got to pay for it. So... Well, anyway, um, they also put in a Dollar General store on McIntosh Road, which is nothing like Knights Griffin Road. They put it on agriculture land, not even on the corner of Tonona Sassa and Knights Griffin. A Dollar General is on Septic and Well, and uh, it blew my mind. They have no problem putting them in, but a gentleman here who's lived there his whole life, pretty much, and his family and taking care of the community in Easter Sunrise, he's just asking for a storage area, and people are upset with it. Well, I can tell you, I've been to many meetings. I was on the steering committee. I was on the Green Belt Committee. Things are changing. Farming's dying. Like I said, I'm the closest farmer and the largest and the last one probably in Thernona Sassa for crops. And it, it's, it's, it's rough. And he's not asking for much. He should be treated fair. From the beginning, the county didn't treat him right from the report and everything else. And the people need to understand when that water and sewer arrives, they won't be looking at a storage unit that has minimum traffic, which they can't see anyway because of all the shrubbery and everything. They're going to be looking currently at four houses per acre. I mean, one house per acre now, which would be about 40 houses on that track. And when the water and sewer gets there, they're going to be looking at 160 houses behind them. Okay? That's how the zoning works when the county has to pay for the urban service area. And if some of the county commissioners have their way, I've been to many of the meetings, and I was kind of shocked. They want to bring affordable housing on these large tracts of land. That's why they're bringing the water and sewer out. And that means apartments and multi-dwelling units. And that's the last thing I want to see out there. So we need to take advantage of stuff like this and allow him to do that because that'll put an end to that piece being developed, you know, unless they try to rezone it down the line. So, and, you know, that's his homestead and his mom's place and everything else. And he, like I said, he's a good person. And all I wanted to do was to see that he was being treated fair. And from the beginning, he wasn't, not from Hillsborough County. And like I said, I'm very disappointed. I work for Hillsborough County. And you have to be fair to the public and to everyone, including your fellow planning commission and your Hillsborough County commissioners. And that never happened. Anyway, um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Yep. Mr. Pressman, we are at the 15 minute mark. Does that conclude your presentation? All right, thank you so much. We'll go to development services, please. Good evening, Tanya Chupella, Development Services. The request is to rezone a portion of approximately seven acres from a total lot area of 39 acres from agricultural rural to commercial intensive restricted. The, proposed, the purpose is to allow for the open storage of domestic vehicles, RVs, boats, and trailers. The surrounding uses in the area consist of agricultural land and single family lots. 
Although there is a nearby lot zone for VPO uses, there is no commercially zoned property in the surrounding area that allows for the proposed use intensity. Develop development services staff finds that the proposed CI restricted zoning district is not compatible with the surrounding zoning and development patterns. A companion comprehensive plan amendment has been filed to change the future land use map designation from residential one to light industrial. At the public hearing on June 18, 2020, the Planning Commission found the proposed amendment to be inconsistent with the comprehensive plan. The Planning Commission staff finds the, the property, the proposed rezoning inconsistent with the future of Hillbrook comprehensive plan. No other agencies offered objections to the request. Based on the above considerations, development services staff finds the request not supportable, and I'd be glad to answer your questions. I don't have any, but thank you. All right, at this time, we'll go to the Planning Commission. Do we have the Planning Commission? All right, well, um, if they come online, just let me know and we'll go back to them. All right, so we'll go to um, uh, citizens that want to testify in support. Those will go first. Is there anyone in the room that would like to testify in support of this application? All right, seeing no one. now. Is there anyone in the building that would like to testify in opposition to this application? How many? Two people? Is that a maybe? <laughs> no, okay, so two in, okay, I have two in the room and I have four signed up virtually. Five signed up virtually, okay. So uh, we do have a total of 15 minutes. So if you could try to keep your uh, comments limited, we're gonna put 15 minutes on the clock. And let's take the uh, folks that are in the room first. If you want to just go ahead and come up, give us your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Ken Brooks, 11108 Lake Sassa Drive. Um, at this point, I'd like to go to one of the virtual speakers, Brian Chalmers. Is that okay? Uh, well, he has a PowerPoint presentation ready. We can. I, do you have comments as well? Or is that okay with you? All right, so let's go ahead and take Mr. Chalmers. Okay, can you hear me okay? We can hear you, go ahead. I'm about to share a screen. Does that work? Please stand, please stand by, Mr. Chalmers. Can I verify, Mr. Chalmers, that you've been sworn in? Uh, I guess not officially, no. I mean, virtual, no. How do we do that? At the beginning of the hearing, we had everybody stand and raise their right hand, but if for this case and any other case, if you can, um, just stand and raise your right hand, and I'll swear you in. Uh, okay, I'm trying to do, do that. Swear to tell the whole truth. That, uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Much. Please continue. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Brian Chalmers. I live at 11201 Lake Sasa Drive. 33592, which is the community um, <clears throat> behind the proposed rezone. Um, so this is relevant to the 20343 we're talking about. And I want to talk about the uh, Lake Perimeter Road and the prior inconsistent to plans um, viewpoint. What is that inconsistent proposal? Well, it's really to put a RV and boatyard uh, in that yellow block box, uh, Mr. Pressman had the same map. I've also got the similar graphic where it sits near the lake. <clears throat> um, this is the last road, uh, the perimeter road of the lake. That photograph is 301 today. So we do have those uh, mildew blue tarps down the street from us on 301, which is a heavily used industrial road. Uh, but we don't have those kind of uh, views around the lake. Uh, people buy these homes around a lake because of the, the view, the quiet culture, uh, and so forth. Um, we can fact check this perhaps at some point, but um, there are some wonderful lakes in Hillsborough County. 
uh, and I would assume that um, they are extremely limited to point of zero for industrial applications inside perimeter roads. What is the problem statement? Uh, the rezone request is to go industrial within the immediate location of the lake and the perimeter road. Uh, US 301 is littered with this type of industrial storage areas already. Uh, the traffic issues are completely unknown. As I took a walk a month ago, uh, Mr. Sladden will remember, he was busy fixing significant damage to his fence and other fences were damaged as well due to um, traffic accidents. It's a very tight corner and there's frequent damage. So the front entrance of an RV uh, location in an already frequently uh, accident occurring location would need severe review. Um, this would be a tremendous eyesore to the north of one of few established neighbors around the lake. The lake's very fortunate to have some very high-end houses, but also some affordable houses, um, which I live in, and I'm very happy to live in. And I didn't buy that property to be next to a, a proposed uh, RV park. The initial hearing stated great community support. Um, that was, in my words, untrue. It was perhaps a vague statement uh, because the community support is only business owners, it's land people uh, to the uh, east, west, north, whatever direction that is, but the people living in the houses is the community and there is no support from the community. Other neighborhood concerns I want to bring up, uh, these were listed by the neighbors. Uh, impact to our property values, we bought in a very unique location. Uh, it's hard to find uh, affordable property uh, near lake venues. The slippery slope, you know, the big toy storage yard uh, can soon become something different tomorrow. I've heard about Amazons and all kinds of things, but they're not around the lake. They are on industrial roads uh, far from where we are. Uh, environmental impact assessment, water, oil, grease, fire protection, you name it, um, need, would need to be addressed. Uh, there is no architectural plans and elevations with this request. Uh, the trees that block this, a lot of them would have to come down to put gates in. Uh, so the, the block uh, that is described would disappear on the main entranceway uh, and everything would be in full view to be able to put gates in there for the right access. And then the maintenance and upkeep as far as who rules the visual and physical upkeep of private area so it doesn't turn up to be the blue tarps and the mildew everywhere per the pictures I showed you. Uh, what are the solutions? Well. I think we as uh, residents, we, we look forward to expansion uh, of potential homes. Um, we struggle for restaurants nearby. We struggle for good grocery stores nearby. Um, I don't think we have objections to custom homes built in the area. Down the street, uh, just down the road, within, what, half a mile, uh, is a wonderful um, uh, Brangus, like a Black Angus type um, high-end uh, cattle farm. Um, very good to look at, and hopefully it's uh, good business for that person as well. Uh, agricultural retail, landscape and nursery, uh, even a country style store, there's other things that could potentially go out there and keep the culture of where we live. Uh, that's the key, key point that uh, I feel is keeping that culture. Uh, and again, farm and livestock. So just as a close, and I'll let my um, fellow community members talk as they need to as well. The inconsistent proposal from June, um, it was 6-3 against this proposed rezone. It was following the county's rules and, and meetings. I don't know why the suggestions that someone's been uh, treated unfairly. Everything's been done per the county's requirements. It's an extremely poor choice for a lakeside rezoning given the, the goals and the culture and the environment of, of our lake area. The, there are much more suitable options. Traffic studies are completely unknown uh, and there will be a severe detrimental visual impact to the uh, adjacent communities. So um, that is the, um, that's the end of my slides and I've just pushed the uh, stop sharing button. So it should be back on the normal screen now. All right, thank you, Mr. Chalmers, for your testimony. I appreciate it. Gentlemen in the room, did you want to just put your name and address on the record in opposition, or did you want to make additional comments? There's about seven minutes left, and there are others online that would like to speak. I still have to put it in. Is it 
Mr. Chalmers? I think he did, didn't he? No, no. Oh, the first one did not. Okay, we'll have you come up. Okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Steve Myers, 11204 Lake Sassa Drive. And, uh, you know, the Homeowners Association put that together, so we don't have a lot to add except some of the things that um, the gentleman that spoke before us, I, don't, I didn't get his name, and so with some of the positives are really some of the negatives. The, that 90 degree corner, you know, getting out of that property would be dangerous because as Stacy comes up that road, they run it all the time. You know, they're always, there's a little accident. So really it's not a, a nice place to access. And I don't have a problem with it if it was across the street or on 301, but on that perimeter Lake Road, I, I, I just think it's a, a bad thing for that area. I'd rather see homes or like all the suggestions we said. So like I said, some of the things he was saying that are a positive to me are a negative. All right, thank you for your testimony. Do you want to sign in? Sir, do you want to just put your, evidently you didn't put your name and address on the record when you spoke before? Uh, Ken Brooks, 11108 Lake Sassa Drive. All right. And uh, I'd like to, anyone online, I'd like to give them a chance before I speak if possible. Okay, awesome. Then we will go to, um, let's see, the next one I have is Janet Doherty. Um, good evening. My name is Janet Doherty, and uh, for the for the record today, I'm here as a concerned citizen and not in my official capacity at EPC. My address is 12722 Flint Lake Drive, Fenona Sasso. Uh, I am here to be a party of record in opposition of this application. I agree and concur with the Planning Commission that the project is inconsistent with the goals, objectives, and policies, uh, policies of the comprehensive plan. McIntosh uh, Road is a level service, I mean, uh, Fort Harrison is a level service D road, Knights Griffin is a, le a level C road, and there's a lot of development that's gonna be happening in Plant City that's already zoned, that's gonna be coming down Knights Griffin. So to say there's not gonna be traffic concerns is really a misnomer, a misstatement, I believe. Uh, I do not believe commercial uses are compatible established in these neighborhoods according to the policy, especially next to Lake Fenona Sasso. Um, it is not uh, compatible with the Lake Fenona Sasso community-based plan, which includes agriculture, protection of property owners' rights and values, establishment of open space, green space, and low density rural residential uses. Finally, the project proposes storage of RV, boats and et cetera, with, uh, without any containment or barriers on the ground. As someone who has expertise in the environment, storage facilities like these do frequently have environmental issues with waste oils and petroleum contamination, which Lake Fenona Sassa, everyone who's on the lake already knows is, has low oxygen levels, nitrogen uh, contamination and frequent algal blooms. And this would just exacerbate those issues. Um, I also concur with the other individual who talked about agriculture. Um, I have some property with cattle. I, I'm really not sure uh, what the 10 or $12,000 cost is. Perhaps he could lease it and it wouldn't be so expensive on the taxes. But uh, I, rec I am asking for you to deny both the comp plan and the zoning application. And thank you for your time. Doherty, I appreciate it. Next, I have Les Thompson. Good afternoon. Uh, it's hard to follow those guys. They pretty much covered it all. And I agree with everything they said. And I want to go a little bit further with it. I'm, I'm confused as a business person. The, 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 he's got 36 acres and he only wants to develop seven of it. So what happens to the remainder of it? Does that stay green belted? Does he lose the green belt on the seven acres? What's the income stream off of seven acres? Does this make practical sense or are we just grasping at straws? I mean, I, I just think this is so unbelievable that this is trying to be done in this area. Our property values will drop. It is a dangerous corner. It's all self-explanatory. And by the way, the industrial park on Florence Road, even by country saying a country mile, that's a whole lot more than 4,000 feet away. I, I will assure you it's more than a couple of miles away. And it also 
is more in that area. It's got mobile home parks around it, not nice homes, not protected waterways. So we're comparing apples and oranges and some of this stuff that are, they brought up to points. So I disagree with all of it, and I'm totally against this zoning. Thank you. Mr. Thompson, before you go, could you give us your address for the record? Absolutely. 11363 Knights Griffith Road, about three quarters of a mile east of this property. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. And the last person I have signed up is Jeff Marple. Jeff, you are on mute. Jeff, your microphone is muted. Good evening, Jeff Marple, 12401 Calusa Lane. I want to compliment the commission in the past. Um, our property, we have a five acre piece of property that's part of Lake Sassa and it's on directly on the lake. And we have to go before the HRRB, which is the Hillsborough Review Resource Board. And the whole point of that board, just like this commission hopefully is gonna find the same conclusion, is to maintain the integrity and the culture of that neighborhood and of that lake. And we've gone through uh, stringent um, specifications and requirements in order to uphold the exact same purpose, design, and um, integrity of our property. And I just want to compliment the, the um, uh, Planning Commission in the past for the great decisions that they made. It is a very dangerous corner, by the way. I'm a cyclist, and right where <clears throat> Knights Griffin and Fort King, um, it's a very difficult corner. And then as you make that left to go towards 301 off of Stacy, um, it's it's very perilous and it's and it's very dangerous. And you have to be completely um, aware. And it may be very difficult for a, a large mobile home or a, a recreational vehicle to be able to pull out without causing an accident. So um, I, I totally empathize with Jamie and what the intent of it is, but it's a, it's a poor choice for the use of that property. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak? One more person virtually. I believe we have Andrew Craig. Okay. Andrew Craig, are you there? Uh, sir, we can't hear you right now. Yes, I'm here. Um, there we go. I'm here in opposition as well, but I think all the bases have been covered in, in, in the 15 minutes allocated for the public. Uh, I think I'm just going to agree with everyone that said um, it's a dangerous corner. Uh, the hazards to the environment, not only to the environment and the homes around it. Um, and I think uh, as an HOA, I think we've spoken our, our piece for it. Thank you. I am a resident oh, your at name and address, please. 004 Lake Sassa Drive. Could you repeat that Andrew. one more time? Yep, 11004 Lake Sassa Drive and Andrew Craig. The testimony. All right, just to make sure, anyone else in the room that wanted to speak in opposition? Um, sir, okay, you just said, that's right, you only put your name and address. If you could just keep your comments short, I'd appreciate it, we're over time. Yeah, yeah, just in closing, I appreciate everyone that's come out to speak. But uh, my wife and I bought it, bought our house uh, this year in February. So what you've got is 26 houses on one street, uh, developed in the late 80s. So a lot of the owners are at or have surpassed and completed their 30-year mortgages. As a as a homeowner, a sole homeowner, you know, normal folk, uh, the, this is our biggest investment. And I'm very concerned about the investment my wife and I, with our two-year-old son, made. And uh, we're, my wife and I are in opposition to having seven acres of uh, uh, RV storage and boat storage uh, for that reason. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, then with that, we'll close opposition testimony and we'll go back to county staff. Mr. Grady, any additional comments? Nothing further. All right, then Mr. Pressman, you have five minutes for a rebuttal. Uh, thank you, Hearing Master. Um, taking great respect to citizens' comments who came down and who took the time to um, have a few comments this evening. And we listen to this, listen to this carefully. The genesis of this, in speaking with Mr. Slatton, was to look for a use that was low impact, that kept itself far away from the residents, that would not have any kind of impact in terms of visual elements or uh, odors or noise. I think he picked a great use. Um, when we talk about a dangerous corner, 
uh, as you indicated in the staff report, the amount of trips is extremely low versus going to a residential community at the same density that's here now, let alone having no view with a row of residential right behind you with literally no buffering. I think there's a choice there, and the good choice is being 400 feet away with use that is never used. So there was a lot of talk about keeping the culture. We are on an Ontario road. We do have great community support. Now it's not in the numbers of residential, but the budding owners to the north and the east and the west are solidly in support to this request. The opposition with respect to these folks is 400 feet away in the south. There's no impact to the lake. It's about as far away from the lake as you could possibly be. So there's no impact there, which you would have if agricultural or if uh, other types of residential uses. Uh, so in respect of keeping the culture for view impacts and having uses that are conducive, I don't think there's any question, but what we're proposing is a positive. Uh, the other gentleman will make a couple comments. All right, there's about three minutes left on your time. There's two things that are being misunderstood. Sure, give us your address, yeah. please. I'm sorry, just your 1103 address. 1103 Sable Cove, Ruskin, Florida. Thank you, sir. We're going for fully enclosed RV storage. We're not putting trailers there. We're putting some boats. We're going to have a high bunker around it with a fence. You'll never even see it. We're, we're going to put the entrance away from the, the road, from the curve. We're trying to do what's best for our community. Okay? Y'all got it wrong. Thank you, sir. If you could please sign in before you go. Thank you. About two and a half minutes. Okay. Um, thank you all for being here. Sorry to take away from your families. All my neighbors, I appreciate you. I picked the lowest thing that I could pick. The hedges come out now. The farms go in. The fertilizer spreads. You know, if, if we don't look at it. I felt we got a very unfair judgment, and I'll let Don come up and finish. But Sir, can you state your name for the record, please? Sir, sir. Hi, my name is Don Balaban. I live at 9410 Allen Brook Street. I'm in support of it. And I just wanted to uh, counter on some of the things they said. Uh, one of the gentlemen said that 301 has uh, uh, too much traffic, excessive traffic to have it up on the board. Sir, if you could please put your mask on. Okay. It's I, um, Thank you. I tried to get us a traffic light at Stacy Road in 301 when I was a deputy. And we had a five-year-old get killed crossing from West Sargent and Park to the bike trail. Hillsborough County denied my red light. And I had the news media there and everybody. And the uh, county said traffic on 301 and Stacy was fine. And I said, you all need to move out there and see what it's like. But anyway, the other thing I want to say, the gentleman that said that lease it to uh, for Brahmas for the guy down the street, he's selling this place. So we'll get that right. I used to run 650 head of cows. It was fifth largest rancher in the county. There's no money in cattle right now. And Jamie could probably lease it for about $800. The only way to make money would be to put a feedlot there. And I'm against that because I know what a dairy smells like. And the people there on Lake Sass and like that, they will smell it. And I'm against that. So I think there has to be a fair medium here. And I've got a lot of friends that live right behind there. I know a lot of people in here. And I'm good to the whole public, and I go and speak on behalf of everybody. But in this case, I'll end it with this. Across the street, the 114 acres I own, they were going to put in 87 homes and a commercial strip on 301. I did not oppose it. I went to the meetings. I just wanted the road moved away from my road. They wouldn't do it. The engineer did, would, but the county wouldn't. I bought it. The reason I bought it was to stop it. OK, and the only thing I want to say is my biggest concern wasn't the 87 homes. My biggest concern is I know the water and sewers coming and I don't want 400 homes across from my property. The traffic would be unbelievable. And that's what they're looking at here, 160 homes. And it's only three to five years out. And they're going to have noise, everything, crime, 160 homes in that track. That's the thank you very time. much. Thank you. All right, then with that, we'll close rezoning STD 20-0343 and go to the next case. The next item is item D2, rezoning PD 20-0356. The applicant is uh, Daly Saez. The request is rezoned from AS1 to plan development. Israel Monsanto will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. All right, is the applicant here? Good evening. Hi, good evening. 
I am the representative of my dad. That's my dad and his wife. Is this okay for them to stand up here? Oh, sure. You're okay. going to translate for them? Yes. Yes, well, absolutely. Uh -huh. Just give us your name and address to okay. everybody. I'm Daily Saez, and my address is 4527 Fontainebleau Road. I'm the agent of my dad, Omar Saez, and Maggie Gomez Amalillo. And the address, the property address is 8512 Radio Lane, Tampa, Florida, 33619. Thank you so much. If you just want to tell us a little bit about why you're rezoning the property. Yes, ma'am. We are trying to rezone the property because he is, he does like minor um, mechanic uh, repair to the family, family members, and kind of like family related people. Um, and it's nothing, um, not, no liquids, no fluids. It's just like minor, like um, electrical, like car plugs, maybe checking oil change. They just checking the fluids, not making any changes, changing tires, uh, mainers, um, repairs. Okay, go ahead with okay. the presentation. Yeah. All right. So he's trying to do. He's trying to build like a like a um, enclosed car uh, port in the back of the house to be able to perform those repairs. Um, they do receive on the property, so they, it will be like a single family home that will still live there, and we're gonna perform. Uh, um, sorry, get a little lost. Okay, so they, uh, they're going to be uh, do the repairs of vehicles uh, owned by the family and family members uh, and accessory uh, used to their principal resident single family use. Um, the, the current uh, the current future land use is a, a community mixed use of CMU, CMU 12. Um, I think that's pretty much that. I just have a couple of questions. Oh, go ahead. Okay. All right. So um, this was cited by the county's code enforcement. I guess they were, he yes, was doing that repair on, mm -hmm. on site. Okay. And um, did you, did they talk to the property owners, your neighbors to the north and the south about this application? Yes. The, I mean, the code enforcement? No, no. Did you talk to your neighbors? Oh, about yeah. The, I got, I, we, we collect signature for all the neighbors around the property. And you have those to submit tonight? I do. Okay. Perfect. Well, I do not have them. With, I have it on my card. If you want them a part of this record, they'll need to be submitted tonight. Okay. Into the record. Now, let me ask, can they? Can we close the case or should she go get them and bring them in before we close the case? Madam, you're yeah, submit them with my application. Oh, you, you've already filed? Uh -huh. Oh, then they're yeah. already part of the record. I yeah, I submit, the, I submit the signature collector from all the neighbors around the property. Okay. And actually a letter for one of the neighbors that she's actually here right now. Oh, all right. Okay. I misunderstood. I apologize. Okay, I'm sorry. And then, that's okay. And then the last thing was I looked at the aerial of the property, and it looks like there is a uh, pool behind the house. Is that pool still there? No, ma'am. Okay, so because it didn't look like there was enough area to build this garage. Yeah, I know. Pool that pool is there. not there anymore. Okay. Yeah, All when right. we bought the house, the pool wasn't there. Okay, that was my only question. Thank, Thank you, you so much. If You're you could welcome. sign in with the clerk's office, I appreciate it. Um, sure, they can sign in. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's go to development services, please. Good evening. It's Ramon Santo, development services. The applicant seeks to resolve a parcel from a cultural single family AS1 to plan development to allow the owner to perform minor auto, auto maintenance on vehicles owned by residents of the house and also on vehicles owned by family members as an accessory use to the principal single family use. The site is located on 8512 Radio Lane in Tampa. This rezoning would allow the property owner to perform regular auto maintenance on vehicles that would include fluid, fluid level checks, adjust the screws, change flat tires, fix electrical problems and or any other minor issues, no fluid oil changes, replacement of hydraulic lines or other type of repairs will be conducted. The applicant will store a maximum of four vehicles in the back of the house away from public view. A detached garage as shown on the submitted plan, 1,800 square feet in size with a cover space of 432 square feet will be used to store vehicles and also perform the repairs of vehicles owned by the residents of the property. The site would meet all the standards found in the Land Development Code, Section 6.11.83, repairs vehicles on residential properties, with the exception of the requirement that only maintenance shall be limited to vehicles registered to or owned by residents of the property on which these vehicles uh, repairs are performed. The proposed accessory use would allow the owner to do maintenance to vehicles owned by relatives not residing on the subject site. 
The applicant, however, proposes restrictions such as limiting the maximum number of vehicles stored, limits to the location of the maintenance work, provide solid screening around the backyard, and restrict the type of maintenance being performed, among other things. Even though the code allows maintenance of commercial vehicles in accordance with 61183B, this is not being proposed and commercial and no commercial activity will be conducted on the premises since the, since the applicant does not offer any services to the general public and this is not open to the public. In order to fully comply with code enforcement citation on, this, on his site, the applicant has cleaned up the site and stored all other items and personal equipment into existing storage sheds in his backyard. Open storage will be prohibited and signage will not be allowed. The staff has evaluated the proposals and restrictions imposed on the site and finds that the proposed accessory use is compatible with the area. Nearby areas consist of agricultural and residential uses today with a warehouse facility along the east. A TICO utility corridor borders the subject site along the north and vacant land exists to the west. The scale of the proposed accessory use would not deviate from the surrounding agricultural and residential character of the area. The location and orientation of the proposed personal shop building behind the house and away from the road would reduce negative impacts from the public right away and other nearby parcels. The restrictions to limit the number of vehicles stored, screening, type of work performed, and building placement would reduce potential impacts to neighboring sites and is more restrictive than currently allowed by code. The existing single family home will maintain its current character and no alterations are being requested. Transportation staff does not object to the request and no conditions are needed for road improvements or site access since the proposed use is not commercial and is accessory in nature. No additional average daily or peak hour trees would be generated. Therefore, based on all the above considerations, the staff recommends approval with conditions and I'm available if you have any questions. Just a question and that's about the um, the condition that uh, requires the repairs be limited to the residents, relatives, or and that the repairs are only done by the property owner. And in terms of your uh, their county's ability to enforce that, yeah, it will be kind of similar to what the uh, conditional use would do. The uh, property owner will have to demonstrate that those uh, vehicles are registered to a family member, either living there or a close relative, uh, which is again similar to what the 61183 would require the applicant to demonstrate if they if they go there and ask for some type of documentation. And so with that, that leads to my, my last question, which is, is the reason for the PD that because there will be cars on site that aren't registered to the property owner, is that correct? Right, there, that will be that possibility, that there will be vehicles in the back, for example, uh, in an instance where actually his daughter, who doesn't live there, could, could go there and his father, uh, her father should be able to, to do some minor basic check on the car, and, and that's why they're doing the PD, because the conditional use wouldn't get them there. And then finally, just one more, is it four total cars or four, two in the... Um four total or four outside and two in the garage? It's four total, it's two inside and two outside. So four totals are all the time. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Planning Commission. Nika Mills, Planning Commission staff. The subject property is located within the community mixed use 12 future land use classification, the urban service area and the East Lake or community plan. Um, <clears throat> the applicants request to a plan development to allow existing single family home and accessory vehicle repair maintenance is consistent with the community mixed use 12 future land use classification. The community mixed use 12 future land use classification is intended for urban intensity and density of uses. The request is compatible with the general development pattern of the surrounding area and therefore meets the intent of policy 1.4 of the future land use element. The applicant is providing a six foot opaque fence as well as there's a covered detached garage on site, which will enclose the area where the auto repair will take place uh, to mitigate any impacts to meeting the intent of policy 16.3 of the comprehensive plan. And based on those considerations, planning and commission staff finds a proposed plan development consistent with the future of Hillsborough comprehensive plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County, subject to conditions proposed by development services staff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone that would like to speak and support? Anyone in favor of this application? Yes, ma'am, if you come forward. 
Good evening. You just pull the microphone to you and give me your name and address to start. Please. Okay, my name is Velma Cornelison. My address is 8524 Radio Lane. And uh, Mr. Saw has been my neighbor about five or six years. They're wonderful people. Uh, they bring in no extra traffic to our neighborhood, other than, their, like they said, their own family. Uh, uh, they're just great people. Uh, we do have a language barrier, uh, but they're there, you know, if we need them. You're doing okay. You're doing okay. I don't know who would have stooped so low to do to these people as to what they have been through. They moved here from Cuba. They don't speak English, but they're learning. There's nobody on this section of the road but us, Mr. Sauls, and one other neighbor. Anybody else is way out. Their homes will, would face south. We face east. We have a wooded area in front of our homes. Uh, I just will be glad when it's over for him. I would ask that y'all let him do what he's wanting to do. He's not bothering anybody. Um, I don't know what I can say to help him more than that. Um, I'm sorry. I'm very. No, you're doing. You're I'm, doing fine. You're I'm doing very fine. emotional. Uh, I have a husband that's been about to die on me ever since February, and they've always been in support of me. Uh, even though we've got the language barrier, they're right there. You know what can I do? Uh, like I said, somebody really went out of their way to cause all this turmoil for this family. I mean, they literally left their section of the neighborhood. If, if you were to come and see, like I said, there's only three houses on our north-south road, part of Radio Lane. And... I, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I uh, see the zoning man out there all the time. Uh, he parks in front of my pasture to spy on them. And whenever I go out to, you know, find out what's going on or why are you here today or whatever, he, he's gone. Uh, my husband, uh, when all this first started, tried to uh, tell the zoning man that Mr. Sauls didn't speak English, and he didn't want to hear it. And uh, he was just malignant with my, to my husband that, oh, he understands what I'm saying. No, they don't understand. They don't understand. Uh, like I said, I'm for anything, anything these people want to do. They're not, like I said, they're not bothering nobody. They don't bother their neighbors. Uh, they're not up and down all night long. Uh, just, they've, un, they've got a large family, but most Cubans and Spanish people do have large families. Uh, I've never seen nothing out of the way there, never. Uh, I don't know. I just want it to end for them in their favor. <laughs> All right. Well, thank in their you. favor. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming down and testifying. If you could please sign in. Is there anyone else that would like to testify in support? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition to the application? All right. Seeing no one, we don't have anyone signed up online. There's no one virtual for this application. All right. Then we'll go back to county staff. Mr. Grady, anything further? Nothing further. All right, then ma'am, you can speak for five minutes or yeah. we'll close it. That's it? Yeah. All right. Oh, sure. Okay. okay. All right. So the house is actually in a dead end. 
she is the one that live in the end of the end, dead end. Um, she actually wrote a letter as well. It's notarized. It's actually in our package. Um, we got signature for all the neighbors. Um, I mean, it's not going to be any noise. Um, like she say, I mean, he got a five, he's a big family. We got five, we have, he got five kids and, and they all have married kids. So we go, I mean, we visit them. I mean, that's the old man, like everybody, you know, and we pretty close. So we visit him a lot. So sometimes that's why there's so many cars, but it's not like everybody, it's not like it's going to be overnight, a lot of cars staying or anything like that. So it's going to be peace and that's a family. I mean, you know, they, they have like old people living in the house. So they keep it quiet, so it's not going to be nothing really crazy going on over there. All right. All right. Thank you for your Thank testimony. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. With that, then we'll close rezoning 20-0356 and go to the next case. The next, the next item is agenda item D3, rezoning ED uh, application 20-0396. The applicant of the Thompson family, the request is, is rezoned from AR to plan development. I'll provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. All right. Is the applicant here or the applicant's virtual? All right. Yes, hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yes, good evening. My name is uh, Quinn Thompson and my husband is Corey Thompson. Our address is 2216 Hinton Ranch Row, Lethia, Florida, 33547. Um, I will be the speaker tonight, but we both are here before you today asking for your approval in rezoning subject property from agriculture zone to PD. The subject site is a 22 acre tract with 1365 feet frontage on State Road 39 and has a depth of between 550 to 895 feet. It is located about 1,000 feet to the intersection of State Road 60 and CR 39. The subject site has easy access to all major highways, US 92, US 275, US 75, US 301, I-4, and other highways. Our project is simple. We will develop about 12 acres of proposed uses and keep the remaining 10 acres for existing use. The site is currently vacant Existing use for timber forest cover the entire 22 acres. This is the only parcel within a 500 feet neighborhood that has pine trees from 20 to 50 feet in height. Here are our proposed uses. A new construction of an agricultural equipment storage, maximum of 9,900 square feet, which is currently a permitted use. A contractor's office with open storage with open storage about two acres located in the agriculture district, which is also a permitted use for parking agriculture equipment, parts, trucks, trailers, tractors, as long as strictly agriculture, agricultural related. A contractor's office about 500 square feet asking for a PD approval to allow projected operation activities of the logistic business supporting agriculture related uses. And um, our family cattle farm, about six acres, which is a permitted use. Um, the fact that 100% frontage of our subject property lies directly on CR 39, which is an arterial road, which turns into a state road 39, which is a principal arterial road, and connects to a state road 60, which is a principal arterial road and the entire property is under single ownership, we're asking for our proposed uses to be considered for approval with a waiver of locational criteria. This area has currently entailed a smooth transition from rural agricultural to a mixture of commercial neighborhood, commercial general, light industrial, planned development, residential, and most of all agricultural development within the last five years. The most nearby and current FDOT projects are opening state, state Road 60 and Dover from four lanes to six lanes traffic. The project will not have any impact on traffic flow within the area. The intensity of the proposed project will be compatible and or similar in a character to the surrounding land uses and zoning of the area. Our project protects the rural character of the area 
there is no design or other functions alter from supporting aquaculture commercial uses. Support development of our neighborhood communities without minimizing our rural agriculture uses. The proposed development will be completed all in one phase with an anticipated completion date in July 2021. The development will be completed without any expense to the general public. Financial guarantee from us will be provided accordingly prior to the construction or an and or any improvement process begins. This is the end of our presentation. We would like to stay our appreciation to the county staff who have been assisting us from beginning to today. And we do thank you for your time and effort to make this meeting happen this evening. I just have one question before you go. Um, the variation you've asked for regarding the buffer and the screening. I understand from the staff report, you're going to increase the size of the buffer, but you want to, instead of putting the type B uh, screen that's required, you want to retain the existing trees. Do you have a picture or something that shows those existing trees and the extent of the buffer? Yes, I do. Unfortunately, I didn't know there was the rule of uh, submitting the the record two days prior to the the meeting. So I have a presentation if I can share the screen with you real quick, or would you like me to turn that in afterwards? I would be happy to do so. Turn it, you can't show it if you didn't turn it in two days prior. So, all yes. right, well then we'll close with that. Development services. Development services department, the applicant is requesting the rezone a 22.04 acre parcel from Agri for rural AR to plan development. Uh, the applicant is requesting uh, amongst the uses Proposers, a 99,900 9, square foot building that should be permitted agricultural parts, agricultural equipment, and seed storage, and a contractor's office with a contractor's office limited to 500 square feet within the 9,900 square foot building. Uh, delivery and shipping of agricultural parts, agricultural equipment, and feed to customers is permitted, but direct on site retail sales will be prohibited. In addition, accessory open storage consisting of agricultural parts, agricultural equipment, and feeds will be permitted as well as cattle farm, pasture, and a timber forest and farm. As noted, uh, and I'm hearing officer, the app has requested a, a variations to buffering and screening of uh, the code. Uh, staff concurs with the applicant's justifications that the 50 foot bu buffer with preservation of trees along the entire project boundary in combination with the large building setbacks provides equivalent buffering and screening and provides buffering and screening that's in keeping with the rural character of the area and with the pros agriculture uses being retained in the parcel. Staff finds the proposed project with the large setbacks, 50 foot buffer with preservation of existing trees around the perimeter of the project, a mixture of uses and the limited size scale of the non-agricultural uses provide for a site design that is compatible with the surrounding development pattern. The Northern staff notes the Northern and Southern portion of the project are proposed to be used for agricultural uses presently permitted under the AR zoning, the current AR zoning district. This locates the non-agricultural uses more internally to the project and limits the scale and size of these uses with setbacks of 300 feet from the eastern boundary, over 400 feet from the southern boundary, over 500 feet from the northern boundary, and with the closest single family home along the southwest corner of the project over 300 feet from the area of the non-agricultural uses. The area along the western boundary within a 50 foot setback is adjacent to agricultural uses. As conditions, the project will be permitted, will be prohibited from on-site retail sales to customers, which will help further limit potential impacts of the project. Based on these considerations and the other factors outlined in the staff report, staff finds request approval. I'm available for any questions. I don't have any this time, but thank you. Planning Commission. Unica Mills Planning Commission staff. The subject property is located within the agricultural rural future land use classification and within the rural area. The applicant is requesting to resume the parcel from agriculture rules to plan development to allow for a 500 square foot contractor's office with open storage, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the proposal is consistent with objective eight and its accompanying policies 8.1, 8.2 and 8.7, as well as objective nine policies 9.1 and 9.2, which require compliance with the comprehensive plan as well as necessary LDC regulations. The request is also consistent with objective 16 and its accompanying policies 16.2, 16.3, which provides direction on achieving compatibility with surrounding land uses through various transitions, buffering and site planning techniques. The applicant has submitted 
a commercial locational criteria waiver as required by objective 22 and policy 22.2. The waiver states that the development is well under <clears throat> the maximum intensity allowed on the site and would not negatively impact the surrounding area. So therefore planning commission supports the applicant's request for a waiver to locational criteria. The proposal meets the intent of objective 29, 29.2, um, policy 30.5, 30.6 that promote the development and retention of agricultural activities in the rural area and is therefore consistent with the comp plan. And based on those considerations, planning commission staff finds a proposed um, plan development consistent with the Hillsborough Comprehensive Plan. Thank you. Very much. Is there anyone that would like to speak in support? Anyone in favor? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition to this application. All right, no one, then uh, county staff, anything else? Nothing further. Okay, then we'll go back. The, the applicant, you uh, can have the last word if you'd like, or we can close. I don't have anything else, thank you. Your testimony and then with that, we'll close application rezoning 20-0396 and go to the last case. The last item on tonight's agenda is agenda item D4, major mod application 20 0808. The, the applicant's Wendover Housing Partners LLC. The request is for a major modification of existing plan development. As noted in the beginning of the hearing, uh, this case will be heard subsequent to uh, this public hearing at the October 13th BOCC land use meeting. Uh, your staff, your staff, rec your recommendation will be filed on October 2nd. Therefore, the oral, oral army filing deadline will be October 12th. Again, you will file your report on October 2nd, and then between October 2nd and October 12th, those persons wishing to speak in front of the board will need to file oral argument as, as described by the county attorney's office at the beginning of this meeting by October 12th. Again, the uh, BOCC land use meeting will be on October 13th at 9 a.m. Uh, at this location. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? Good evening. Good evening, Kevin Reale, 401 East Jackson Street for the applicant. Um, just going to start by introducing our team uh, and uh, want to submit a couple of resumes to the record. We have David Smith, a planner with 44 years experience and Steve Henry, a traffic engineer with 36 years experience. Uh, they're gonna present the primary application. All right, thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening, uh, David Smith, 401 East Jackson Street, Suite 2100, Tampa, Florida, for the petitioner. Let me hold, I'm gonna hand something out very quickly for you. Mr. Smith, before you begin, I have listed uh, James Dial as he should be calling in just to be available to answer any questions. All right, so for all questions only? Correct. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. As indicated by staff, this is a major modification to an existing plan development. This plan development currently allows for this subject parcel to have 49,220 square feet of commercial development. We're proposing a development option that would allow It would allow the subject property outlined in red here uh, to have as a development option 116 multifamily units, either senior or family. We provided two site plans in the application package that lays out the um, development plan for both options um, as far as the new options. Uh, there was already an existing plan for the commercial. We're also requesting a flex of the OC district, which is to our east into the property to allow for the requested density. Um, in looking at the looking at the the project, this project as a uh, providing these development options is actually a development um, proposal that provides for a complementary use to the existing OC or mixed use criteria uh, categories in the plan in the area now. The pro, pro, <clears throat> proposed development provides complementary and transitional use between the intense commercial development uh, east, which is the Lowe's Shopping Center, uh, to the residential uh, that is to the west. Uh, the proposed use also greatly re reduces, and Steve Henry will speak to that, the number of peak, peak hour and daily trips allowed 
by the currently permitted 49,220 square feet of commercial um, when the options are considered. It also implements and furthers the county policies of infill development, focused development in the in, uh, USA. It's proximate to transit and community services and demonstrates connectivity and as a result reduces urban sprawl. The subject property in, is indicated in this graphic. The plan locates it on the far east side of the property, providing over 700 foot of separation from the nearest residential to the west and over 400 feet of separation to the nearest residential to the south. Uh, this mitigation of and setback provided for um, in this plan uh, greatly reduces any perceived impacts from the additional height that would be experienced by the development. We think that coupled with the reduced traffic um, mitigates any potential um, off um, adverse impacts that may be perceived and it will be evident again of when you when you hear from Steve Henry. It also implements and furthers the Riverview Community Plan. Uh, this plan, you know, even though it has a, a vision map that is somewhat general, the subject property is located roughly on this curved area right around on the flat. It's not to scale, it's, it's part of the community plan. But either whether or not it's in the, um, the mixed use component or it's in the residential component, both of these vision uh, areas identify these areas as high densities with a variety of businesses and the residential area recognize high densities are permitted and promotes housing diversity. Clearly multifamily development uh, provides housing diversity, uh, particularly if we can get a senior housing project uh, in the property. Although this project is not conditioned as an affordable housing project, it is funded and supported by the county as an affordable housing funded um, project and is pursuing additional funding uh, through the State Housing Finance Agency uh, to complete the project. Uh, in doing so, it complements the housing elements goals of providing affordable housing to the community and also um, addresses a critical need that's been identified in Hillsborough County as a shortage of affordable housing. The requested flex is consistent with the granting the flex rate criteria in that the adequate public facilities of water, sewer, solid waste to support the, uh, the project are in place. Well, it is an infill, infill development. The, as stated by the Planning Commission report, the development is compatible as uh, designed since it provides a site plan that places the structures to the eastern side of the parcel, provides significant setbacks from existing residential uses to the west and south, is located and well accessed and connected to sidewalks and pedestrian ways, and it's sensitive and ensures the mitigation of any perceived impacts through its site design. Development services staff also indicates compatibility of the project is further by, is supported by them by finding that the multi-use within a larger context of the overall area provides for complementary use within the area. Might also note that uh, Mathog Road is actually a part of a future long connector, a collector road yeah, that is eventually planned to go all the way south down to Sims Road. Um, so this isn't just a subdivision street, this is a fully public road. What I provided here in, in, is a graphic which says, if you look on Mathug Road and you're looking west, that is across the retention pond to the closest residential subdivision. Um, at the beginning of the PD for this back in 2002, I don't know when it was planted, but a 25 foot landscape buffer was put in place, which is now developed and, and fully thick. You cannot see a residence across that pond. And this is the intersection of town center and the property, a subject property is across the street. Additionally, looking to the south on Mathog Road, looking down into the subdivision to our south, the only thing in between this site and um, our request are, is a new charter school. Um, we know there's some concerns about the charter school traffic. I think there's some uh, pictures in the record that would appear to be uh, related to the um, drop off and pick up hours because there was no use other than the subdivision immediately to our south. And lastly, just a, a side note, the subject PD to our south that has the residential subdivision um, back in 2005 received a flex approval because at that time it was gonna be developed for 400 plus multifamily housing units. Over the years it changed and its approval um, was, went back to single family because of 
uh, the lack of connectivity out to 301. I think there were some wetland issues and that eventually was developed as a single family project. Um, I'll turn this over to Steve Henry now. I'll be glad to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Steve Henry, Links and Associates, 5023 West Laurel, Tampa 33607. As Mr. Smith had indicated, the site is currently zoned for 49,000, 220,000 square feet of commercial. And we're proposing you know, two development options, senior homes and then also multifamily. And what we've done is a, is a trip generation comparison. This first one, if I can get it. It illustrates a trip generation comparison between the approved 49,000 square feet, which is in red, that would generate about 3,700 trips per day, compared to the senior housing, which would be about 429, versus the multifamily at about 630. So you can see a significant decrease in the amount of traffic that may be on Town Center or Mathog Road. Next graphic illustrates comparison of, of the peak hours. The the right is, is excuse me, the left is the AM peak hour, which shows that the commercial generate about 176 AM peak hour trips. The senior uh, housing in green would be about 23, multifamily about 40. And then on the right is the PM peak hour. Again, the multi red is the retail, which would generate about 322, 30 senior homes, and then for the multifamily would be about 51. So you can see that there's a significant decrease in the amount of traffic with these development options versus what it's currently approved for today. Um, and as Mr. Smith had indicated in, in the record, you'll see some pictures of some of the and, and issues with the, the traffic on Mathog Road. Again, as he had indicated, we believe that's from the school traffic backing up and drop off and pick up. But this particular project would have a significant decrease in the amount of traffic adding to that. And in addition to it, it, this project has access to both Town Center Drive on the north, then also Mathog. So we have two ways out. And finally, uh, again, you'll see in the, in the record of, about traffic on Gibsons and Drive. As you're aware, the, the Board of County Commissioners decided many years ago to adopt mobility fees as opposed to concurrency. So this project will pay its mo uh, mobility fees to mitigate the impacts of the project. That concludes my presentation, unless you've got any questions. I don't, my only question would be how you calculated the um, the commercial traffic. Was it particular use? use uh, based or? on shopping center. We just use a general shopping center because we okay. don't really know what that use might be. So we just use a general shopping center rate. That was my only question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes, that concludes the presentation. I'd like to reserve any extra time for rebuttal, please. All right, we'll do. Thank you so much. Now we'll go to development services. Hi, good evening. This is Michelle Heinrich, development services. Um, as you heard, this is a proposed modification to PD 020060. And there are basically three requests. The first is to separate parcel E into parcels E1 and E2. Parcel E is a little over 10 acres in size, and it is approved for 104,500 square feet of commercial. The southern portion has already been developed with a charter school. Secondly, as you heard, uh, the applicants are seeking a second development option for parcel E1 that will continue to permit their allotted share of retail which is 49,220 square feet. However, it will also allow for a maximum of 116 multifamily uh, units, which could be uh, age restricted to seniors or standard to be open um, to anyone in the general public. Thirdly, the applicants are requesting a flex of the OC20 future land use category into 5.8 acres of the parcel. That would mean the density would increase from six units per acre to 20 units per acre. Um, they are not seeking a flex of the commercial portion, so no additional square footage is proposed. Um, in general, the area is developed with residential and non-residential uses. 
The PD itself consists of six parcels, four of which permit commercial and office. The remaining two are permitted only for stormwater retention. Single family residential is located uh, to the south and west of the PD, and you saw some of those pictures and graphics from the applicant. And um, there are intervening uses between the uh, proposed development area and those residential areas. Also, um, as you may have noticed in the backup on this existing PD, there are a central north-south roadway that connects two areas to the north and south of the PD. And there is a primary east-west thoroughfare, which connects to um, existing eastern and western areas. And also just to note for some context, the area to the immediate east is developed with commercial. It is a Lowe's store with uh, retail out parcels, and that is located at the corner of Gibsonton and 301. Um, as the applicant showed, there are significant setbacks that are proposed um, from the parcel boundaries and the PD boundaries. A maximum height of 56 feet, four stories is proposed. And as you saw that the building is located in the southeastern portion of the site, closest to the existing commercial. And that is to, of course, uh, mitigate for any impacts to the um, surrounding single family, which you saw from the graphics is currently buffered by intervening uses or vegetation or significant areas used for uh, retention. We did not receive any objections from reviewing agencies and it has been found to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Therefore, staff does recommend approval subject to proposed conditions and I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you. I don't have any questions at this time, but thank you. Uh, Planning Commission, please. Unica Mills Planning Commission staff, the subject property is located within the suburb of Mitch U6 future land use classification within the urban service area and the Riverview and South Shore area wide systems community plans. The applicants request for a flex of the office commercial 20, <clears throat> which, which abuts parcel E approximately is approximately 50, 500 feet into the parcel. According to the application, the flex request is consistent with the comprehensive plan policy 7.4 as the property for the proposed project is served by adequate public facilities and is located within a parcel of land that is a developed commercial area separated from less dense residential. <clears throat> Planning Commission staff has reviewed the application and determined that the proposed <clears throat> senior, senior and multifamily development satisfies policy 7.4 of the future land use element, which provides the criteria for the flex. <clears throat> the site plan submitted by the applicant indicates vehicle connections to the north and west internal vehicular and protection access is also being provided. The proposed accesses would facilitate connectivity in the general area, which will be consistent with policy 16.3 of the future land use element. Policy 16.7 in the Incorporated Hillsborough Comprehensive Plan requires residential neighborhoods to include an efficient system of internal circulation and street stub outs to connect adjacent neighborhoods together. The request would satisfy those policies. The proposed development is consistent with goal two of the Riverview Community Plan, which seeks to encourage attractive residential development that complements the surrounding character and promotes housing diversity. Overall, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed modification is compatible with the surrounding area and the request would encourage residential development that complements the surrounding character and promotes housing diversity as noted within the Riverview Community Plan. And based on those considerations, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed major modification consistent with the Future Hills for a Comprehensive Plan. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your testimony. Is there anyone in the room that would like to testify in support? Anyone in favor of the application? All right, I have one person signed up uh, virtually to speak in opposition. Is there anyone in the room that would like to speak in opposition? How many, are, are there three of you? Okay, so four total. So let's take the folks in the room first. If you wanna just come up and start by giving us your name and address. 
virtual speaker opposition has I'm sorry, I missed that. The virtual speaker what? Oh, has not. Okay. All right. Then we'll get, we'll see if he gets in at the end. Good evening, sir. My name is uh, Thomas Fletcher. I reside at 10016 Kenda Drive in Riverview, where I have lived for almost 29 years. I'm here today representing the 30 families of Kenda Drive and 116 of Waterstone Lakes who have signed a petition in opposition to mod major modification application MM 20 0808. Uh, first, I'd like to give you a little history since I've lived there for 29 years. Prior to year 200, 2003, several attempts were made to move a big box store onto the corner of Gibsonton and US 301, which was not in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Those proposals were disapproved. Soon after a proposal to put a low store on the corner was approved, over the objections of many local residents and still not in compliance with the comprehensive plan. County staff at that time agreed that a degree of protection needed to be established to prevent more commercial expansion to the west toward Kenda Drive. So they promised that there would be never be any commercial zoning within this planned development. Unfortunately, that promise was not kept. And in 2004, a BPO on the property was approved and divided the property into five parcels. Parcel E was zoned CN, but at least county recognized the need for restrictions to maintain a buffer for our community. Later, parcel E was subdivided into two sections with the school allowed on the south portion. The property to the south of Lowe's was originally zoned for townhomes with I might add a 35 foot height restriction. Around 2007, two attempts to raise the height restrictions were denied and the town homes and single family homes were approved south and west of Lowe's, some of which became Waterstone Lakes. My purpose for giving this background is to emphasize that county staff at that time were adamant when they established the maximum height restriction of 35 feet and property use intensity restrictions on parcel E. No other property in the area, including the lows, are four stories high. Approving a building of that height does not fit into the character of the surrounding areas and does not belong on the parcel. The parcel is zoned as SMU 6 and should remain so. Flexing to OC 20 virtually eliminates our buffer and will intensify and aggravate the traffic situation in the area. The major modification application included a traffic study which compared traffic trip generations between a shopping center to a four-story senior resident apartment building. In actuality, the study should have included a similar analysis of a four-story standard apartment building with 116 apartments that would generate many more trips than a senior resident apartment building. There were other deficiencies in this study, which were described by Pete Reiner in his obje objection of this major modification. Allowing this change and putting it in a worst case scenario Consider this, if the four-story 116-unit apartment building is ultimately the goal and it is approved, our two single-family neighborhoods with approximately 137 homes with, will almost double in population overnight on just six acres between the neighborhoods. As a final point, in order to maintain a buffer between the Lowe's complex and surrounding communities, the county put restrictions on the use of the parcel to mitigate the use and intensity of the parcel. All the properties in the area have height restrictions, and to date, the county has maintained those restrictions at 35 feet. The parcel was zoned SMU 6 to maintain the use intensity 
to be consistent with surrounding property. We ask you to maintain the current restrictions on the parcel in order to preserve, preserve our neighborhood from further unexpected growth that is not compatible with single family living. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. If you could please sign in. Thank you. <laughs> you say in unison. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, Bridget Falosk. I live at 10459 Flagstaff Falls Avenue in Riverview. Uh, you are our person we have virtual, so you're here. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time this evening to allow me to speak at today's meeting. I felt it was important for me to be here in person, even in a, in a pandemic versus speaking virtually. That's how serious this topic is to me and my community. I'm here to represent the voice of Waterstone Lakes, a 99 single family home community in Riverview in opposition to major modification 20-0808. If this modification passes, it would change the current landscape from future commercial growth to residential growth. And there are several reasons why I and the residents of Waterstone Lakes op oppose this modification. When searching for a home, my husband and I took many things into consideration. Schools, surrounding businesses, easy access to and from our place of work, a place that has a sense of community with an urban feel and no thoroughfare traffic. We chose to build a home in Waterstone Lakes for these reasons. We saw the parcels of land that were commercially zoned near the developing community and considered it a welcoming idea for future small business commerce and economic growth for Riverview. We were excited about the charter school on Mathog Road and how close it would be for our child to attend an A-rated school within walking distance. We drove through the surrounding neighborhoods to see what other kinds of residential areas there were and to make sure we were going to be residing in a safe neighborhood. Since Waterstone Lakes isn't a gated community, but is very well secluded, we didn't want to feel pinned in or there be too much growth projected in the immediate area. Before we finalized our decision to buy a home in this community, we did our research and understood that Matog Road parcels would be developed for small commercial businesses and once commercial developers decided to start building there, it wouldn't feel as though we were boxed in or in a quote unquote big city with towering apartments. The current order with a maximum height of 35 feet and 100 linear feet fits well into the planned community that I and 98 other homeowners welcomed when we bought our homes. We chose to build our homes in our community with all of this in mind. Major modification 20-0808 would essentially pack the entire Waterstone Lakes community and population into parcel E2, which would be too densely populated for that area. This major modification would change that in a negative capacity. Promises matter. I and the residents of Waterstone Lakes implore you to keep the existing restrictions on the parcel. The size height restrictions and SMU 6 zoning restrictions will effectively limit the intensity of future building projects and provide the best transition and buffer for our neighborhood and those our neighbors on Kendra Drive. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you could please sign in. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Peter Reiner. I live at 10001 Kendra Drive. Uh, we've been there for well since 98. Uh, we chose this area too. We want to be in the country, but the inner city uh, services. I'd like to thank you uh, for letting me speak tonight. Like my neighbor Thomas and uh, Bridget, I'm representing both the communities of Kendall Drive and Waterstone Lakes. We put in two petitions. They are a matter of record already. We have some additional uh, signatures tonight, but we don't have five copies of them. Uh, but we have contacted everybody we have contacted within the two, two communities have signed a petition. Uh, six for one person who didn't sign contracts, or didn't you, sign a petition. You don't need five copies. If you have one copy, you can submit she it to the She has one copy over Yeah, perfect. Okay. And then it'll be in the record. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. You've heard and read our objections and concerns over this major modification. It is simply too tall and too intense for our neighborhood areas. We've heard of this uh, traffic study. We have some serious concerns over the study. I, I find it Unreal how you can have five times the number of vehicles in a 116 apartment complex over 
over 62 compared to regular and only a fraction more ins and outs. Uh, the intent, the, the, the plan, the uh, study just doesn't make sense to us. And to think that you can put up 116 units for over 62 age group and they have 43 parking places in today's uh, environment just doesn't make sense. There's gonna be more cars there. And if we don't put the parking in for the cars, we'll have a parking issue on top of the traffic issue. This major modification should not be approved. Uh, you've heard the history of the zoning board staff initially promising and maintaining no commercial zoning buffer between the Lowe's complex and our street, which happened back in 2003. Since the Lowe's, uh, zone, Lowe's zoning was approved, there have been major projects completed in the Riverview area, including the entire Fishhawk area, the thousands of houses built along Highway 301 quarter, the South Shore area, there's also a lot of commercial development throughout Riverview. During the 17 years of development, when all this came to fruition, the county maintained zoning restrictions in our area. Although a large project, a new storage facility in the west of Gibson Dunn looks like it's gonna be below 35 foot also, maintained the restriction for height, just like all, everything else in our area. Nothing in our area has changed to justify a change in restrictions on this parcel. As I see it, the county has already flexed on this partial from the original agreement, although we understand the agreement was never in writing. Um, the county is again being asked to use flex on this parcel. If this flex is approved and the restrictions are removed, there's no guarantee that anything's gonna be built. It's not inconceivable that the next time we're here, we could hear another developer asking for another change for more apartments or something like that, or even change it from age restriction to non-age restriction. Um, I wasn't sure that was still in, in the plan. They could also ask for extra floors, make a med medical facility, an office building, who knows what could come in. When we open that door, that Pandora's box is open, it's a slippery slope. When you start making flexes and changes to the restrictions, you start taking away our, our flexibility. And I'm sure it's just a matter of time, if this is approved, that they're gonna come in and wanna change the, the zoning and the restrictions on parcel A, which is right adjacent to our neighborhoods. Currently, it is a single story, 7,500 square foot uh, uh, office building. Uh, but if they get a four story building across the street, they're gonna flex and wanna go two stories and who knows what else they're gonna ask for. It's time to stop. Enforce the restrictions that are in place already. The county put them there. We live in a small, almost rural community. Unlike Waterstone Lakes, Kinda Drive has no sidewalks. We don't even have street lights. We have to take a collection on our community to pay for Tico lights to be put up on the street for our protection. One key feature, one key feature of the zoning process is to protect existing neighborhoods and maintain the character of the area. We're not asking the county to add more restrictions on this BPO, just maintain the existing restrictions to protect our neighborhoods and maintain an adequate buffer from the oversized Lowe's complex. A four-story building with 116 departments just doesn't do that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you could please sign in. Anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? I don't see anyone in the room and I don't believe we have anyone else virtually. All right, then we'll go back to county staff. Mr. Grady, any additional comments? I believe uh, James Ratliff of Transportation Review would like to speak. All right, Mr. Ratliff. Yes, hello. Uh, are you all able to hear me? Yes, we are, go ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, for the record, James Ratliff with uh, Transportation Review. Um, I wanted to um, essentially uh, kind of correct something that I heard earlier, which was that um, the transportation analysis that we did was very conservative in our staff report. We essentially looked at it from the standpoint of uh, comparing the what could be built on the property today with um, 116 multifamily units. Um, we did not look at it from the standpoint of uh, age restricted housing. So the numbers in our staff report are uh, a conservative look. Uh, if you were to actually lower um, the height of the structure um, to let's say two stories, 
uh, and it's a little counterintuitive maybe, but the trip generation would actually get a little bit more intense. Um, and, and so I did want to point out that, you know, when we looked at it, essentially that this does result in a reduction uh, of trips based upon what could be uh, built there today. Clarification, I appreciate it. Mr. Grady, anything further? I have nothing further unless Michelle has something to add. Ms. Heinrich, any additional comments before we move on? Uh, no, ma'am, only if you have questions. Point, but thank you. All right, we'll go to the applicant for who has five minutes for rebuttal. Hello, Kevin Reale again for the applicant 401 East Jackson Street. Um, we're just going to go over a couple of things that were mentioned uh, in the, the public testimony. And um, I think it's important to note that the flex provision and the uh, development that's proposed here has been found consistent by both our planning expert and the county's experts and been found compatible. Um, with the development in the area. Also, the Planning Commission found this consistent with the Land Development Code. And this is extremely important because, um, uh, as you are well aware, uh, expert testimony, especially to things like traffic and general desires to maintain the status quo, uh, when you hear from the public, is not, um, it's not con competent substantial evidence. So there is competent substantial evidence in the record of consistency and compatibility. Um, and what we don't see from uh, the public testimony is competent substantial evidence. And I, I do have a memo that I would like to submit from my firm in the record for that. Um, more specifically to the development itself, a lot of the concerns from the public, uh, you know, I, I, I want to point out a, a couple of things. First of all, as we've said, and as development services have said, and also the traffic engineer for the county, the reduction in traffic is, is um, very significant. And it did consider both senior housing and uh, regular multifamily development. Um, and uh, also, as noted by our planner, this uh, use here would actually be a proper transition. The use to the east, the low shopping center, is a very intense commercial use. And so while it may seem uh, to some in the, in the local neighborhood that it's an inappropriate use to add a multifamily development there, that actually is a, uh, a use that will transition from that intense commercial use to the neighborhood uses. There's also a lot of discussion about um, the the height of the property. And this transition in the height um, with the significant 700 foot setback to the uh, to the west is um, is going to make this development compatible with the area. Uh, it's important to note too, to the south, the setback is um, approximately 430 feet. Um, and while the height may seem significant when compared to the lows because the height proposed is higher than the Lowe's property. Given the setback, the bulk is actually smaller when viewed from the development to the south than the bulk of the Lowe's. Uh, so if you extrapolate out the height of the Lowe's building and compare it to the height of the uh, proposed development, the, the bulk from the property line would be less uh, for the developments being proposed, even though the height is higher because of that extra, extra buffer and setback. Can I interrupt you just on that point, just ask a question. The 700 foot setback you're talking about to the west, that's over parcel B1. Uh, Is that how you're calculating that from this parcel E1? You're including that? Correct. To so the residences. We're, we're just, so when we, when we speak to buffer there, we're actually just speaking to the, the distance from the proposed development to the development to the west. And that parcel is still uh, proposed to be only retention. Uh, the, there's a portion of that's retention. Actually, I'll ask uh, our planner to come up because he's going to also talk about how the flex impacts that okay. development. Yeah, David Smith, uh, Strange Weeper Miller. Uh, the retention pond is just uh, at the corner of Town Center Drive and Mathog Road. The parcel A that was mentioned by the resident is the uh, office or BPO parcel that's to the south. Okay. So uh, from our property to their subdivision on Kendra, is the closest point is 740 plus feet, uh, indicating a, a great separation. Also um, to um, Ms. Reale's point is that, you know, standing in your backyard, looking out 700 plus feet at a four story building, um, your view gets obscured by pretty small, you know, any tree, anything obscures the view. The fact that we are that far away um, is a very compatible uh, scenario. 
Uh, the setbacks within the Waterstone actually have very minimal side yard setbacks. So uh, there's much more close perception looking at a two-story house at their house next door than is even possible looking at our property. Also like to lay a concern that was raised about parcel A, uh, par uh, excuse me, yeah, parcel B rather, the one that is the office parcel. That parcel will not be able to be a uh, kind of flex. Uh, the flex is only available 500 feet from the nearest property line that is at a higher land use category. That property abuts Ken the Kendra subdivision. It's on the west side of Mathog, and the SMU6 is well beyond 500 plus feet to get over to that parcel. So there's no opportunity to flex, not to mention the fact that there's a charter school and our proposed project would be in between. They could not flex over our property to get any increased density on that site. And also one more point is, is that that provides significant buffer because there is a planted 25 foot planted vegetated buffer that has to remain in place regardless, even when that parcel is developed uh, for office. Have to answer any other questions. Uh, you answered my question, thank you. About if 30 could, seconds left on your time. Okay, if I, I'm just gonna briefly conclude. Um, hopefully not being too repetitive here, but just wanna reemphasize, we have uh, some expert testimony in the record of consistent compatible development, um, expert testimony of a proper transition from uh, an intense use to a less intense use and, and the buffers that are being offered, making this development compatible and uh, expert testimony that this would reduce traffic. Uh, all those together, we believe, creates a, a project that is uh, good for this location, infill and diverse housing, which is uh, contemplated and desired by the comprehensive plan. Uh, and there is uh, no uh, confidence essential evidence to support uh, denial. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then with that, we'll close major modification 20-0808 and adjourn the hearing. Thank you all for your time and testimony.